Hello everybody, I hope you are doing well. And I just want to encourage my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, especially those who are suffering right now. You know, life is hard. Most people know that. Whether you're a Christian or not a Christian, life is hard. And if you will, imagine life like a big race. We're running around an oval track. You wake up, you nourish yourself, go to work, do this and that and you do it all over again. You're just going in circles, it feels like for some of us. And time stops for no one. You have to move forward. And the only time you can stop going forward is when you drop and you're out of this life. And so some people could find that very um, depressing. Some people could find that torturous. And some people might find it very delightful and happy at times. But there will be times where suffering will come. And for the Christian, when it's God ordained to give you an opportunity, not a reason to despair, but a blessing. But when this suffering comes, it catches us off guard. Sometimes we don't realize this from God. We think it's something so terrible and bad. And it's like as if you're running this race, this giant chain goes around your waist and it's attached to this huge tire and you just really just reeled back it hurts it digs into your flesh and you're like how am i supposed to continue to run this race this mental affliction is so great and painful i can't do anything but just think about this pain there is this giant tire attached to my waist how am i supposed to run with everybody and you see other people just run past you some of them even look happy while you're doing it and you can't get out of this thing you're trying everything you can you're trying to go to doctors doing medication do this or that and all this and none of it can get this chain off of you. And so what are you supposed to do? Many people are frozen in fear. They lock themselves in, in their home, literally. Some people refuse to go to work anymore or they refuse to take care of their family. They refuse to do a lot of things that they know they should do. And that is responding by fear. That is responding by freezing because this tire is attached onto you and some of you are complaining to God, saying, why? But what does God want us to do? Is he not in charge of all circumstances? Is he not sovereign over that chain, that mental affliction, that tire in your life? What God wants you to do is trust in him. Trust in him and move forward. Continue the race if it's Inch by inch, no matter how small, you pull that tire. You endure. You trust in Him. You endure knowing that it is being used for your good. And you keep on taking care of your family. You go to work. You faithfully do what you need to do. And you just obey Him. And as you do this, your faith will grow. As you pull this tire... Your muscles will grow without you even realizing. And in divine timing and method, God will take that chain off of your waist and you will start running at speeds that you never thought possible. You will start running with power and vigor that you didn't know where it was coming from. Because while you were tied to that chain with that suffering, you learned to go off a different power source. Not by your own but by God's power living through you, depending on his grace to pull you through. And as you do this, your spiritual muscles grow. Your faith grows. You learn to trust in God, whether it's sunny or it's dark, whether it's calm or windy and rainy. And even when thunder and lightning is introduced, you move forward. And so don't be discouraged at the time of affliction. Instead of being frozen in fear, ask yourself, what is God trying to teach me? What does God want me to do at this time? All the while trusting in him. And so when God, when you ask God to give me this, give me the strength, give me that, a lot of times God is asking you to give. He wants you to give to others even though you feel empty, even though you feel have you have nothing to give, God says, you have my grace. 
And I want you to be a beacon of hope to others, to strengthen others, even though you have no strength of your own. But I want you to learn to go off my strength by believing in my word that my grace is sufficient for you and I'm using all of this for your good as sovereign God. And I want you to minister to other hurting people, even though you're hurting. I want you to serve in this capacity. Follow what God wants for you and follow his word and see how he's moving your heart depending on him and serve others, even though you are in a storm. You know, sometimes this could look like a strange thing. It's as if we're on a big boat and we're in a terrible storm, lightning, thunder, wind, even like parts of the wood is being blown off the lightning. People are scared all around you. You're tempted to be scared and you could just be huddled in a corner shaking like everybody else. But you trust in God. You know that he is God of the storm, that he controls the winds, the lightning and thunder, and that he loves you and he's using it for your good. And so you stand up straight and walk over to your fellow brother or sister in Christ, give him a hug, give her a hug, and speak encouragement into that person's soul. Speak the word of God. And so that they may learn to trust in God as you do and you both stand up and go to the next person. It's the same storm. It's the same kind of fear that you may be experiencing as the other person, but you trust in God so you can move forward. And so today I want to just encourage you to rely on God to provide for your needs every day. And when you feel like you need, I need this, I need that, know that God will provide for you and focus on actually giving, giving to others, loving on your family, loving on others, serving others. So I want to read to you a passage in the Bible where a lady is asked to do just that. This widow has a son and they are at the end of themselves, I imagine. They are out of money. They have one meal left and they're going to eat it and die. That's the plan. There's nothing left. There's no more hope. And God sends Elijah to this widow and her son. It's from 1 Kings chapter 17. Verses 8 through 16. Then the word of the Lord came to him. Get up, go to Zarephath that belongs to Sidon and stay there. Look, I've commanded a woman who is a widow to provide for you there. So Elijah got up and went to Zarephath. When he arrived at the city gate, there was a widow gathering wood. Elijah called to her and said, please bring me a little water in a cup and let me drink. As she went to get it, he called to her and said, please bring me a piece of bread in your hand. But she said, as the Lord your God lives, I don't have anything baked, only a handful of flour in the jar and a bit of oil in the jug. Just now I am gathering a couple of sticks in order to go prepare it for myself and my son so we can eat it and die. Then Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go and do as you have said, but first make me a small loaf from it and bring it to me. Afterward, you may make some for yourself and your son, for this is what the Lord God of Israel says. The flour jar will not become empty and the oil jug will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the surface of the land. So she proceeded to do according to the word of Elijah. Then the woman, Elijah, and her household ate for many days. The flour jar did not become empty and the oil jug did not run dry according to the word of the Lord. He has spoken through Elijah. Amen. So this widow had a handful of flour for herself. And her son, this is pretty much her wealth at this time. Everything she has in terms of her survival. And here Elijah is saying, can I have some of that? And so she could be quite possibly one of the most neediest persons during that time. And God is asking her to give. Instead of her saying, God, give me. God is saying, no, you give. Obey me, trust me. And he gave him, gave her this word saying that, don't be afraid, just do it. Obey me and I will provide for you. Specifically, that jar of flour and oil will not run dry. She's probably never seen that before, nor even heard of such a thing. But she trusted in God. Same thing for you. How can I help other people, you may say, when I'm such a mess? I can't even do this or that. I'm stranded on my bed. I can't even get out. How am I supposed to go and help other people or go to work and do this? Well, God said, 
my grace is sufficient for you. That's your flour and oil jar that will never run dry, promised by God. What does that mean, my grace is enough for you? That means he'll meet your every need. Everything you need, he will provide. It's unlimited, unmerited. You, didn't, you don't deserve it. You never did anything to deserve it. And you never will do anything to deserve it because Jesus did it for you. He paid for it. And God is saying, because of what my son did for you, my grace will be sufficient. So get up out of your bed. Go to work and help others because your flour and oil jar will never run dry. Because my grace is enough. I have spoken it. God has spoken it. Sorry, I go back and forth with that. But God's word said that his grace is enough and so it is. That's how you can stand up straight and help your neighbor. And so I want you to also realize here on how to live trusting in God one day at a time. Okay? And so God could have gave her all the flour and oil up front. Right? It could have spared her the temptation to worry about tomorrow. But if he did that, she may be tempted to trust in the flour and oil and no longer in God. That is the same for us. When I was struggling with my trial, um, the first one with um, insomnia, whenever I woke up the next day, I would be fearful for the, very sa- the, uh, the next night on whether I'll get enough sleep or not. I wasn't trusting God that he'll provide for me. And so it's like this lady who looks into the jar and oil, gets enough for today, but she immediately worries, well, God, give me enough for tomorrow. I know he was faithful today, but what about tomorrow and the day after? See, God puts us in opportunities, gives us opportunities to trust in him. He doesn't want to give us everything up front to tempt us to trust in money, health, this or that. He wants us to trust in him one day at a time. Just like this lady was given just enough food, just like the Israelites were given manna just for the day, he wants us to take him at his word and trust in him one day at a time. And sorry, I'm going back and forth here, but when God asked her to give that flower, she probably wanted to receive. And I challenge you guys to do the very same thing. When you feel like you need something, in order to survive, why don't you let go and give back to the Lord instead? Serve him, obey him, love others. In my second trial, the last one with the COVID fear that was wreaking havoc on my body with anxiety and fear, I remember at one time at church, after I gave a message to fifth and sixth graders, I was coming out to the lobby, I was so anxious that I felt like my spine was shaking. I needed help because around 11 a.m., like during those times, this like physical thing will grab me in the neck. It was just a manifestation of some sort of anxiety. I think it was spiritual. And I'd be so terrified of that coming. So during this time I was in the lobby, I cried out to God, help me, give me help, encourage me. And this man came up to me I never met. And he shook my hand and introduced himself and said, I'll be right back. And I said, thank you, Lord, you're helping me. And he came back and he started physically shaking in front of me. And just started pouring his heart out to me, telling me about his circumstances and how much stress and anxiety he was under. And so I started just pouring into him. I started encouraging him through the word of God. I even shared a little bit about my testimony, like in one minute. And he was helped. You know, I feel like he was helped because even, you know, asked, you know, hopefully we would talk again. And after that, I just said, God, I asked for help. What are you, like, sending another person for me to help? But I just helped that person. You know, like I felt that's what God wanted me to do. So I just did it. And then about half an hour later, I was in the main service. And our pastor spoke a passage on Isaiah that said, your warfare is over. And that neck thing disappeared from that day forward. That was one of the most miraculous things I've experienced. But just like that lady, the widow, God asked her to give instead of receive. She first gave and then she received. I asked for help, but God said, give, I gave, and then God blessed me and set me free from that one thing. So guys, whatever you're holding on to that you're not surrendering with these just iron fists wrapped around whatever you think you need, surrender it to God. Let it go. It's like giving up a little piece of flour in order to receive the jar of flour and oil that never runs dry. 
you're exchanging something so worthless for something so infinitely worthwhile. That is the case in this life with everything when we hold on to something and not give it to God. When we surrender it to God, He gives us something so much better. We have to not worry about it first of all. We don't have to worry about when we surrender everything. Our health, our money, our future, our tomorrows. When we give it to God, it's in His possession. He will take care of it. And then you don't have to worry about a thing. You're like a child before Him. Let it go. It's okay. And don't hold on to anything. It's, it's not good for you. It's not good for us. And so learn to give to others even when you're in a time of affliction. And as you give, God will give to you. As you bless, you will be blessed. So don't give in to fear. Don't despair. That chain may be around your waist today with that tire behind you, but just move forward in faith, trusting in Him. Because there will be a time and day when that chain is released and freed from you. You are free from that chain and you will walk with speed and endurance and maybe even wings at this point <laughs> because you have learned to surrender and trust in God. You have learned to not go off your strength but the strength that belongs to God which He freely gives to you. Trust in God. That is a simple message. Trust in God for today. Trust in God for tomorrow. Obey Him in all things. Don't focus on yourself. Focus on God and others. And he will meet your needs and he'll take care of you in every way possible. God bless you.